worship this morning. I've got quite a lot of notices, so I hope you will bear with me. The first is that for the first time in a long time, we have tea and coffee after this morning's service. So if you would like to, please stop behind and have tea and coffee. Don't feel that you have to, but we would love it if you would like to. The second thing is that this week, Parents and Tots is on Tuesday. It's our last meeting of Parents and Tots um, for this academic year. On Wednesday, Church Committee meets at 7.30 in the hall. On Thursday, there's morning prayers here in church at quarter to ten. And in the evening, bowls in the hall. I will be taking next Sunday's morning service. And a couple of other notices. We start our share of the prayer watch on Wednesday the 29th. That's Wednesday this week. You might know that there's a rolling prayer watch that goes around the Moravian Church. And different provinces are allocated different hours. And different congreg each congregation within a province is allocated hours as well. So, we have from Wednesday the 29th of June, from 7 o'clock in the morning, through to Thursday the 30th of June, to 6 o'clock in the morning. And a number of people have already volunteered to take hours in the prayer watch. And it would be wonderful if more people could sign up. I'm going to put the prayer watch list over on that side of the church, along with notes to help you with the prayer watch. It's praying for the entire Moravian church across the world. So that will be over there. Please sign up and uh, take a share in the prayer watch. The second thing is that Holiday Bible Club. We're planning a Holiday Bible Club that will be for three days in the summer. We just choose between two weeks at the moment, so I will let you know the minute we have that sorted. But we are having a Holiday Bible Club this year. Are we having an auction with Billy? Consensus of opinion is that there will be an auction on the last Friday in August. Is that the right date? So um, I know there's lots of people excited and pleased about that, so looking forward to that. And the very last bit of news, a lovely bit of news, is that Lucy Douglas got engaged to Ross Evans in the last few days. So they're hoping to get married next year. So we wish them all the very best and are looking forward to hearing more. Oh, and I have actually one other note, two other notices, sorry about that. There is a, a house for rent in Fairfield in Manchester, if anyone's interested. It's two double bedrooms and a single bedroom. I have all the details here. And a notice from Cliftonville Moravian Church. There is a service tonight, Memory Stones of Love, remembering all the wonderful people who lost through the pandemic, who were lost through the pandemic, whatever the cause or illness. So if you would like to go to that service, it's at 7.30 tonight at Cliftonville. It's open to anyone who has lost somebody during the time of the pandemic, whatever the cause. So the details are on the notices in, on the notice board in the church porch. So, we begin our worship with the words of praise. Please stand. O Lord, open eyes. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. And we remain standing to sing for mission praise, my Jesus, my Saviour.
marks the end of Alison's nearly 30 years as our church organist and pianist. So this service is based around the hymns that Alison has chosen as her favourite hymns. And Alison said that this hymn, this song, is like a special prayer to her. It's telling us all of the glory of God and the universe. So we're going to say, alternately, Psalm 148, which is a wonderful psalm of praise to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, you highest heavens. And your warriors of all the skies. Praise the Lord from the earth. And praise him, the traitors of all the angels. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds. You mountains and all hills, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, princes and all rulers of the land, young men and women, let them praise the name of the Lord. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Praise the Lord. And we continue in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, because you make all that draws forth our praise and the forms in which to express it, because you make artists of us all, awakening courage to look again at what is taken for granted, grace to share these insights with others, Vision to reveal the future already in being. Because you form your word among us, and in your great work embrace all human experience, even death itself, inspiring our resurrection song. Lord, you have called us to worship you. We gladly gather. As we praise you through our own inadequacy, our own inadequacy reminds us of how we have broken our relationship with you. Because we have sinned against you, even our worship fails to be what it could. We often treat it as show. We simply go through motions, failing to recognise that you want to engage us deeply. Receive the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are our God. Amen. And stand to sing again in Christ alone. <coughs>
Alison chose this thing because it was one of her mum's favourites. It was written by Keith Getty and Stuart Townsend. In fact, the melody is Keith Getty, and Stuart started working on the words. And he said in an interview, I was sent the melody by Keith Getty. I loved it and sat down to write the hymn. The only thing I could think was to base it on the eternal theme of the life, death and resurrection of Christ. The verses came in a fairly linear way, but as the third verse developed, I was getting really excited as I thought about the amazing implications of Christ's work on the cross. I wanted to write a fourth verse that was about us, but not just an emotional response, but as an undeniable statement of the power of Christ to sustain us in this life. I think context, he said, is vitally important to our corporate worship. Sometimes great melodies are let down by indifferent or cliched words. It's the writer's <coughs> job to dig deep into the meaning of scripture and express in poetic and memorable ways the truth he or she finds there. Knowing the truth about God and who we are to him is central to our lives as believers. Songs remain in the mind in a way sermons do not. So songwriters have an important role and a huge responsibility. And he ended by saying, Keith and I are overwhelmed with the response this song has had, and we are just grateful to God that he should use it to build up his church in this way. I thought we'd just look back very quickly at the words in the song. So just very quickly looking at the first verse. <clears throat> he is my light, my strength, my song, my hope. I think so many of us can identify with that phrase, a cornerstone, solid ground for our lives. And if we go on to the second part, heights of love, depths of peace, when fears are still and striving cease. I think that first verse speaks to me more than almost any other verse in, in the song. And going on to the second verse, in Christ alone, this verse is totally about the incarnation. Um, you might, or it reminds me of the wonderful Charles Wesley in Veiled in Flesh, the Godhead See, from Heart the Herald Angels Sing. And it is, do you want to go on to the next one? It is totally about the life and death of Jesus and the fact that every sin and every burden I would add too has been laid on Jesus and can be laid on Jesus. That what happened on the cross was once forever for all of us in the past and into the future. Then on the third verse, it's very much Good Friday and Easter Sunday. The idea of deep in the ground Christ's body lay and then bursting forth. And I'm sure you can think of these things that have similar emotions to that express similar words. But in the second part, as he stands in victory, it's the implication of what Easter is for us, of what Christ's death means and his resurrection. Sin's curse has lost its grip on me. And then the last verse. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. Sometimes we find it very difficult to remember that. But we are our Lord's. Whatever happens, he has given us a future. And nothing can take us away from that future. And we're called to remain constant in that until he returns or calls us home. And until that point, we are called to stay standing in the power of Christ. And I think two very similar verses from a completely different hymn. Again, the Charles Wesley hymn. And I think you can see the influence of Charles Wesley in so many modern hymn writers. It's, it's 266 in our hymn book. And can it be? The last two verses with and can it be? 
when the first um, <clears throat> long my imprisoned spirit lay, the third verse and the fourth verse, no condemnation now I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. So a hymn of the life and the death and the implications of that and the hope through the resurrection that we share as Christians. A beautiful hymn with lovely lyrics. So, we continue with our next hymn, which is a modern version of The Lord's My Shepherd.
we turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. And the response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord, we come to you with sorrowing hearts for the dreadful news that we have heard recently of the earthquake in Afghanistan. Lord, we lift to you an impoverished, hungry people, a land suffering from drought, a people suffering from religious oppression, and now a natural disaster. The Lord, we pray for families who are grieving, people who are bereft. We pray for the international aid to get quickly to the people who need it most. We pray for the ongoing work of charities like Christian Aid, who have been bringing aid into the country for so long to help so many. We pray for the continuing war in Ukraine. We pray for the people who are suffering there. And we pray for peace and for justice there. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for governments. For governments across the world. For governments that we disagree with. Whose actions we find abhorrent. We pray that you will change hearts and minds. That you will bring about peace in so many places. Think particularly of the governments of Afghanistan, of Russia, and so many of the different places. Because Lord, we want what you want for this world. Peace and justice and life to its fullest. And so we pray for our own government, that it will govern us wisely. We pray for stormwood. We pray for all those in local governments. Lord, guide and direct their paths. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we lift to you the environmental crisis that is increasingly coming upon us. In climate change and in environmental degradation. The Lord, creator of this world, Creator of all things that move and live, that breathe. We are ashamed of what we have done to your world. Help us to seek ways to live more gently on this earth and to pay closer regard to your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those who are struggling with faith those who are finding it so difficult to believe, those who have had their faith shaken. We pray for those who are struggling with debt, those who are struggling with family problems, and those who are facing addiction. Lord, be with them and give them strength and grace and hope. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are ill. Be with those who care for them at home, in the community, and in hospital. We pray for those who are grieving and those who feel that their sorrow will never end. Lord, may your healing touch, may your strengthening touch be on all. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for artists who visualise what cannot be expressed in words. And we ask that you bless them for writers, for poets, and for hymn writers. We we'll thank you for the way that eternal truths are expressed in the stanza of a hymn. Bless their work, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord, we pray for musicians and composers. We thank you for the way that music 
stirs our hearts and minds, for the way that hymns stay with us. So Lord, we thank you for musicians and composers. We pray that you will bless their work and that all things will be done to your praise and glory. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our own congregation and our worship here. We Lord, we thank you for everyone who worships in this place, for all who bring us music, and particularly today for Alison. We ask you to bless this congregation, corporately and individually. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And we finish with the words on the sheet. Creator God, you have made us in your image to reflect your goodness. You have called us to use our gifts to build your kingdom. As we begin to stay, we seek to reflect your image. Help us not only to focus on how we develop our creativity, but also to seek the wisdom to use our skills to your glory and for the building up of the people we serve. In the name of Christ, and through the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. And now we stand to sing, Lord for the years. <laughs>
about Michael Bourne, who wrote the music. And Tim W. Smith said, I think hymns are extremely important. Many people learn more theology from hymns than from anything else. They stay in the memory, I think. For many people, the hymn offers the chance to express emotions which are in their hearts, but which they would find difficulty in articulating themselves. Our best hymns do that. He was talking about hymns generally, not about this specific hymn. I think he's right. The number of people who can remember hymns in great old age, but can't remember a great deal else, but the hymns have stayed there. We had a lovely musician at Gonsol Road in church who was suffering badly from dementia and <laughs> Alzheimer's, but he could still play the organ, and his daughter would stand beside him and just indicate which verse it was, and he could play. He found it difficult to speak, but he could still play for us. So music stays in a way that very little else often does. Apparently, Tim W. Smith's father died when he was just 11, and he said, of course, I had prayed when I knew he was ill. And you might think that my prayers, not altering the situation, would have put me off, but it didn't. It introduced me to my need of a Heavenly Father. And it was at school, he said, that he fully committed his life to Christ. It's a wonderful thing to turn to Christ as a young person. And somebody else wrote of this hymn, Tim and Dudley Smith's inspiration is the work of Charles Wesley. Lord for the years has a biblical quality that I think the Wesleys would have admired. There is a sense of the God of the Old Testament, timeless with his people throughout the ages. There is a sense of the Holy Spirit with God from the beginning and still speaking to people's hearts. There is a sense of Jesus, the man of sorrows, who is disowned and doubted, but who now reigns as king. There is a sense of the world that God loves so much, a sense of people who are actually trapped by the materialism they have embraced. There is a sense of moving forward to the future God has for us. And the tune for the hymn is called Lord for the Years, and it was written by Michael Ball, who, like Tim W. Smith, was a bishop in the Church of England. And it's a wonderful tune. The way he uses the stress in each line on the word Lord. And if you listen to the hymn, Lord for the years. It's a one. Each verse gives us that stress on the word Lord. So we're just going to look very quickly back at the verses of that hymn. <clears throat> the writer that I looked up talked of God's... Um, of the hymn looking back to the Old Testament times. But for me, and I think for Alison, it's very much more looking back on our lives, how God has been there from the beginning in our lives, sometimes completely unrecognised, but been there and guided and inspired us. And it's to that God who has been there from our birth that we bring our thanks today. And the next verse... How much faith means to us, how it teaches us, how it leads us, and how there are those moments, the mountaintop moments, where our faith sets our whole life alive. But it's not just for the mountaintop experiences, is it? It's also for the times when we are rebuked, when we learn through the hard things that have happened as well. So it's a hymn that calls for us to praise God for all that he has taught us and shown us. And then the third verse. This is the verse that talks about spirits oppressed by pleasure, wealth and care. And that, I think, is so true for our world today. There are so many other things that people could be doing, rather than perhaps be in church on a Sunday, or rather um, that occupy them, so that that God's face hold that should be there in all of our lives is somehow covered up. 
So of spirits oppressed by pleasure, wealth and care. Many prayings for young and old, and a particular phrase I love, for Commonwealth and Nation. You couldn't actually have a better verse than this verse, while the Commonwealth and heads of states are meeting at the moment in Rwanda. And it's good to pray, not just for the whole world, but particularly for those countries that have links to our own, the Commonwealth and our nation. Lord of our land, be pleased to hear our prayer. And then the next verse is a recognition of people who don't come to faith, men who disown and doubt you, and that's that reflection of the Good Friday experience of Jesus being disowned. But it's also a verse that sums up our prayers for others, people who are in desperate need, and people who feel completely lost and are lost without Jesus. So we pray that Jesus will reign in men and women's hearts across the world. And very last verse is the verse that takes us into the future, praying that God will remake us today and every day, help us to put ourselves last and Christ first, and to forget the past in a way that binds us, and to look to the future where Jesus leads us, Lord of our lives, to live for Christ alone. So a beautiful hymn, and thank you, Alison, for picking that hymn. Awesome. I want to say just a few words to you. I want to thank you for all your work over the past 30 years. I know you had a two-year maternity break, but <laughs> all in all, 30 years here, as a musician and as a co-leader of worship, because I don't think it's often recognised that actually services are a partnership between the minister and the musician. I have trusted you completely and utterly through the time that I have been here, the 10 more years. It has been such a pleasure and a privilege to work with you. I valued your opinion on tunes, the way you thought things ought to go, your willingness to play things, even if they're slightly out of the box. I've always accepted your choice on the tunes. <clears throat> and I think so much too, we don't appreciate Alison's wonderful advice on this piano that um, came through the generosity of Alison's family. So many people when they come here have commented on what a wonderful piano it is. Alison, you have been a fantastic organist and pianist. You have no idea how much we all appreciate what you've done, your willingness to work with everybody here. You transpose things so easily. You play with an energy and a joy and a faith. One of the things that I found interesting is that the hymns that you picked today are all new hymns in a way. And I think that that speaks to new ways of reaching people in the culture that we're in now, not necessarily the culture of past years. That doesn't mean that the past hymns, the great hymns from the past, are not important. They still are. But faith moves on and it rolls on. And it must speak to each generation. And you have picked some absolutely fabulous things today. And thank you for sharing your Christian faith through the words and music so freely this morning. And I want also to say thank you too for the beautiful music that you bring us before services. I know folk here love to chat, and there's lots of chat going on, but you bring us some absolutely beautiful memories, mel melodies, and we are grateful. So I have just a few things. Harrison, can you come up and help? That would be so good. This is quite. I tell you what. Are you strong? <laughs> oh, that's not for Alison. You're going to have to come up here. <laughs>
there's a short prayer on the sheet. We pray together. God of majesty, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be with your servants who make arts and music for your people, that with joy we on earth may glimpse your beauty and bring us to the fulfilment of that hope of perfection which will be ours as we stand before your unveiled glory. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Alison said of this last hymn, she said, It gives me encouragement about my life when times and things are tough. So we're going to stand to sing this very well-known hymn, Chime, Jesus, Shine. Friendship. 
and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you now and evermore. Amen. Please remain for coffee if you'd like to, and please also sign the prayer watch sheet that will be at that side of the church. Thank you.